Good morning once again. Welcome to the Morning Touch. I am Darwin Campbell. The Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale for your encouragement. You know, last time we talked a little bit about the subject of your spiritual temperature. And we hope that you were able to, for one moment, take your spiritual temperature to see whether you are hot, lukewarm, or cold. Well, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about another important element in looking at where you are spiritually, and that is your foundation. You know, it is important in any house, in the building of any house, to have a strong foundation. I know you wouldn't want to buy a home that you walked into and you found a lot of cracks going up and down the wall, and you found a lot of cracks going along the floor. It would mean that something's wrong with the foundation. My friends, it is important that you and I look at our foundation. Because if we've got cracks in our spiritual walls and cracks in our spiritual floors, it means that perhaps we are not building on a strong foundation. And it means perhaps that we have a problem with our spiritual temperature. For that, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 24, verses uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 28. There we're going to talk to you about what Jesus says about your building. How is your foundation today? Here's what Jesus has to say. He gives us the instructions in verse 24 to 28 when he tells us how to build. He says, therefore, everyone who hears those words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man that builds his house on a rock. The rains come down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rains come down, the streams rose, the winds blow and beat on the house, and it fell, and a, there was a great crash. My friends, Jesus sets up two scenarios. You can build your house on the rock, the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Or you can build your house on the sand, the shifting sands of the world, the shifting sands of culture, the shifting sands of government, the shifting sands of opinion. You can build your house on either of those rocks. And I assure you that in building your house on the shifting sands, the words of Jesus will come true and be prevalent in your life. If you build your house on the shifting sands and the changing sands of culture and the world and sin and opinion, my friends, it is due to fall. Let me say this. As we examine building a house on a rock, it is important to understand that in any case, Jesus says, that the winds of life will blow. Jesus says that the waters of life will rise. Jesus says that the storms of life will come. But there are two different scenarios with two different endings in either case. If you have cracks in your spiritual foundation, if you're lukewarm or you are not hot for the kingdom, if you are just cold and you have no relationship with God, it is important that you understand what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is building on the sand is spiritually dangerous. Building on a sand amounts to a spiritual loss for your soul. Building on the sand will leave you unprepared to meet your God. My friends, there are benefits to building on the rock and there are perils to building on the sand. First, we're gonna to talk to you about building on the rock. When you build on the rock, that's Jesus Christ. When the trial comes to your life, as ultimately it does to all of us, when challenges and tribulations come, as it does to all of us, I want you to know that you will be protected against the wind, against the rain, against the storms that come upon you. It could be a tidal wave. It could be an earthquake of problems and situations that just roll all over you. But my friends, because you have built on the rock, Jesus says simply in Matthew 7, 
that nothing will come against you and anything that does will not stand. The foundation is on the rock. The rain can come, the streams can rise, the winds can blow, but he says, you will stand because it's founded on a rock. Look at that time-tested measure on any serious child of God's life, on any child of God whose life is truly built on the rock, whose life is truly hot for the Lord, where the relationship is sound and strong. When the same challenges come, loss of job, loss of finances, disease, they handle it a lot better than those who are uncertain of their futures and who don't know about the promises of God. My friends, Jesus makes it clear that when you build on the sand, when you build on the sand and these winds blow and the rains come and the floods come, my friends, you cannot stand. And it says, not only will you not stand, but great will be the fall of the house. The perils of building on the sand, it may look good. I, I know we, we go out to California and you can look and see all of the nice homes built on the sand. But you also see that those homes built on the sand, when they are challenged by the elements, they fall into the sea. And we have a physical example a true example of what happens to the life that's not built upon God. The perils of building on the sand leave you powerless, leave you vulnerable, leave you open, leave you defeated, leave you without protection. My friends, I want to ask you something. Would you go into war without protection, without weapons, without the ability to fight back? Of course, the answer to that question is no. But if you're building right now on the sands of culture, on the sands of opinion, on the sands of this world, on the sands of materialism, on the sands of riches and wealth, my friends, you are setting yourself up for a fall and failure. Because when the winds come and the rains come and the storms come, my friends, great will be the fall of your house. You will have nothing to stand on. I want to encourage you to look to Jesus, Hebrews 12 and 2, the author and finisher of your faith. He is the only way, truth, and life, John 14, 6. He is the only guarantee. Everybody likes a guarantee. He's the guarantee that when your life hits the skids, or you have problems, he's got you. He's got you. I don't know about you, but I prefer to build my house on the rock, and I prefer to leave the houses on the sand right where they stand, because I know that in that day, Jesus is going to make sure that I'm going to make it through the challenge, that I'm going to survive the trial, that I'm going to make it through the tribulation, that I've got protection. You know, I'm like the weeble. You know, that was an old saying back when we grew up, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. The wind can blow, and the rains can come, and the storms can hit. But my friends, I may be struck, and I may take a blow, but weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. And that's the way it is with Jesus. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. And I'm glad to be a weeble for Jesus, and I hope you are too. You know, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplain for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale. I want to encourage you, build your house on the rock and be a weeble that wobbles, but don't fall down. In the name of Jesus, we commit this lesson to you. Have a great day.